Hello people, Juggler here. Let's talk about Flip Flop. No, not the foot garment, I mean this perk. Or well, this build in particular. Because to be honest, I think a lot of people are so under the impression that it's considered bullying, so I'm going to throw some light on builds and people's mentalities. So strap in, pour a cup of coffee and watch some Flip Flop moments. But before we do get into this montage of nonsense, I do want to give my opinion on the perk set. So firstly, do I think it's toxic to run a build like this? Well, yes and no. The word toxic or bully is thrown around too much in Dead by Daylight, but my opinion on this matter is it can be very obnoxious if an entire team dedicates a game to playing this way. So by that I mean is you take four friends, three of them run flip flop builds, and the other goes ham on gens. That way the killer is stuck in a whack-a-mole playstyle which can last around 20 minutes. It's boring and not fun, some deem it bullying, but then you have to do the flip side of the argument. Yes, the killer isn't having fun, but in life, or any scenario, sometimes things happen at others' expense. Take for example a killer whose idea of fun it is to go for a 50 win streak and they're on win number 48. They're so close but they come up against a very good team, they're not playing toxic, they're just efficient, know how to loop and basically know what they're doing. So the killer decides to slug them all or tunnel them out of the game. The killer wins in this situation keeping his strike, keeping his fun and at the expense of who? The survivor, who probably didn't have fun. Or here's another situation I was wanting. I was trying to get an only world record for some time at one point. Ooh, you're on. So I ran a very early game build. Slugged hard, I had three on the floor and the fourth DC'd. Did any of those survivors have any fun? Probably not. So my fun came at their expense. I wasn't doing it with ill intent or any reason other than I wanted to get a record time. So you can look at all situations and all angles, but I'm talking about the flip flop build in solo queue. Is it viable? It is to a degree is the best I can answer. Because obviously certain maps, certain hook positions, hell even certain killer builds cancel it out, but when it works, my god it works well. So here we go. So the first game is against the Knight, and just to give a glimpse into what this build is, I've got Unbreakable, which means I can pick myself off the ground in case they decide to leave me on the ground. I've got Boil Over, which makes it so they can't see the hooks within 16 meters, and it makes them like wiggle like crazy. I've got Power Struggle in case they panic and go for a pallet, which drops it on the head when uh, they walk through it. I can drop it myself. And then obviously Flip Flop, which means while I'm on the ground, the, um, the wiggle meter goes up whilst I'm charging up um, my recovery time. So... As you can see, I've flip-flopped off him, I'm going back to the top, Gener generators are getting done and I'm wasting his time, it's perfect, and I know I've still got Unbreakable in the bag. I fake the window there, and first things first, he's already once been flip-flopped, so he's going to want to leave me on the ground, which is totally understandable, I get that, I'd want to leave me on the ground and let me bleed out, he's not got a kill yet, he's got two people on death hook, so he's had a pretty good game, but I've wasted his time for the last two gens, and here we go, he's just going to leave me on the ground. But he doesn't know I've got Unbreakable in my pocket. And also, he doesn't know that because I've got Flip Flop, I'm converting the recovery time into Wiggle time. So even if I go down now, I can drop down and let him pick me up. I'll still get off. This is when it comes in clutch. End game, it's actually really good. So in a way, I'm sort of faking a false sense of security. Just for the record, I have played against uh, Flip Flop bully squads before. It is annoying, but... You move on. So here we go, he's picked me up. I've already wiggled over halfway. <laughs> Hit the great skill checks, I'm nearly off anyway. He's never going to get me there in time, and that's the boil over coming into play there. He, he can't move properly, it's very annoying. And again, even if he wants to leave me to bleed out, he's not going to be able to because I've got Unbreakable. And there we go, I'm out. So that's the first game. So this one's a bit different because the clown had been, I guess in his view, might have been having fun, but to me it was a bit annoying. He was tunneling people out of the game, people were DCing, and he was letting people play down the floor. I did flip-flop off him once, so to him I was annoying. That's the way things are sometimes. But he was never going to um, pick me up in this situation he, he knew my build because he could see the way I've been playing. He probably knew he was going to get power struggled. So instead he decided to let me bleed out on the ground. So I did the only thing I could do, which is pretend that I was AFK and let the birds appear above my head. And eventually, I waited for the perfect moment and got myself up. I figured by this point he might have just gotten so bored that he thinks I've um, gone completely AFK and he's gone AFK himself. So I've got up and I've luckily found the hatch. In his situation, he could have easily just looked for the hatch beforehand, like just having on the ground, so that's his own mistake. But yeah, there's another example. 
Now, this is a totally different example. This is when I'm playing against a nemesis, and I think this is when this is when it gets... I feel a bit sorry for the killer because I think he might have been a new player. Obviously, MMR's, MMR's all over the place, so you, sometimes you get good killers, sometimes you get bad ones. In this one, I think he was just inexperienced, or maybe he plays Survivor mainly. But, again, we're flip-flopping. We're wasting his time. You're best off not getting grabbed out of the lock when you're running this build. You want to like, charge it up a little bit so you get a little tiny bit. This is probably the best map for this, by the way. So, he is never going to get me to hook in that situation. Unless he goes and drops inside the middle, he might just make it. But in this situation, I, I felt bad. I'm not going to lie. At the end of this, I did feel kind of bad. But, do you know what? He could have left me on the ground. Or... In this situation, your best bet, if you're playing killer, is just leave the person alone. Because you've got, you know they've got no gen increase uh, perks. They've literally got a build dedicated to just being picked up and dropped. So, you're best off to leave this kind of player alone. So here, this time, he tried a different method, and he goes for the other way. He gets a little bit stuck here and there. Drops down. I'm nearly off again. And there we go. He, he cannot hook me. It, again, I was playing solo queue, but it gets better. This is the the final pickup, which, uh, yeah, I nearly got hit by a zombie then as well. So, he picks me up again. Third time's a charm, right? And this is just amazing. This, this snowman comes in clutch. Completely body blocks him. And that's it. Yeah, he's had enough. And you know what? I don't blame him. He probably thought we were swift, but we really weren't. It's just they um, obviously understood my plan and joined in. But yeah, I felt kind of bad after that one. I'm not going to lie. He did seem quite new. Okay, so the final one is against another knight. And I, I, w I must admit, this killer did not seem inexperienced at all. He knew what he was doing. And yeah, this is when the, the build... I was lucky and fortunate that I found a spot which he couldn't hook me for, but here we go. So, he's got me. He's taken me to the hook. And this is a killer who has map awareness. He knows where his hooks are before he's... before he's, um, picked me up. Because a lot of hook placements are similar, so he's got me to the hook in no problem. Absolutely no time. So... Let's spin this on to the end game. Okay, so we've got one gen left, and I'm just going to say this. I've got no problem admitting the truth in how the game went. He was basically face camping most of the people and proxying because I, I think he was just frustrated at my build. I hadn't even flip-flopped off him, but I don't know. So this is where my experience comes into it because I found a different place and I know he can't hook me from this spot. And I think he gets to the point where he knows it as well. Comes close though. So I have now discovered a spot. So I'm going to go straight back to it and waste his time. Let the other uh, survivors do the gens. And this is why I think the build sometimes is really nice. And it's even better if you get down by the minion in this situation because you can get your recovery time up. So I'll go back to the exact same corner. Now, I don't know what he could do differently in this situation because he probably knows I'm running Unbreakable and running um, obviously flip-flop. So he knows that I'm going to be at least converted. He's not going to go, go and pick me up. So he just has to leave me, but then I've got Unbreakable. So, here's this situation. Because he left me so long on the ground, my survivor teammates came over to me and got me up. And he went from potentially getting maybe a 3k at one point during this game to getting zero kills. But he did play well at the start. I don't know why he decided to start pro proxying and phase camping because I honestly think he could have beaten us all. So... Yeah, this is where I think that's when the build comes in really clutch because I wasted his time that much towards the end. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something from this. Don't forget to like and subscribe.